This is something a lot of you have been wanting for a while and I wanted to wait until a few of the previous videos I posted were up and running before doing this so I could point to some data and to some reasons as to why I approach things the way that I do. What I want to talk about is my approach to preparation, what tools that I use in creating my espresso when, when employing a typical nine bar style shot. So the last few videos that I did, which I'll link throughout this video, were looks at different preparation techniques whenever you're making espresso, what tamper you're using, how you tamp, whether or not you should use the mesh screens or paper filters in your puck different ways of distribution. So whether you should use a WDT or the Autocomb or the Moonraker or 3D printed things or whatever it might be. With all of those, I wanted to lead up into the way that I kind of brew my own espresso. The machines I'll use are the Decent DE1 XL and the DF64 Gen 2. I'm gonna be using a flat nine bar profile on the Decent to replicate what the majority of you all are using. This is not necessarily my preference, nor is it not my preference. It's just what was on the table from testing that I was doing yesterday. For my little dose cup, I just use this little ketchup thing that comes with your option O. I like it, it's a nice little size, easy to wipe out. I use an Akaya Lunar, it's bougie. If you don't need to have it, there are much great options for a lot cheaper than this. You can get down to like 0.01 uh, accuracy for really, really cheap, like 20 bucks, just jewelry skills. Here is just a little squirt bottle. This is for Ross Droplet Technique. You know, I have a video here explaining the effects of this once you put it into a certain amount. I don't actually do enough in order to see the effects of that study. And it's because that's just another thing to dial in and I don't wanna deal with that. So I always just do two squirts or whatever I find necessary for whatever grinder I'm using in order to reduce retention as much as possible. And it works really well. I use the Weber Workshop's blind shaker. You have a little plug that goes in the barrel and then a little lid with a hole in the center to sit on top of that knob. Shake, shake, shake. Then when you dump it into the basket, you just lift the plug and it falls in a very specific fashion because the insides of this lip are slanted inwards. This actually allows for the grounds to come and then they kind of lay flat into the basket, giving you a really, really nice distribution inside of the basket. And as I show in this video here, it is kind of the most consistent way that you can distribute your grounds, even without putting a WDT anywhere near the basket. I do like to throw a paper filter on the bottom of the basket. That does require you to grind a little bit more finely, but it can clean up the cup a bit. I do use a puck screen. Link right here, my puck screen video, you can see that there is an objective uh, escalation in the extraction properties when you're using a puck screen. Something like this, the Weber one, this one's from It's Chris. Also I have like the Flare one and the Normcore one, they're all great. Initially I was doing it before I had the data because it was keeping my group head clean, but it does allow me to grind a bit more coarsely. I use a funnel so that I can dose into my portafilter without spilling everywhere. This is the Swarks funnel, but you can use any funnel that works well. I just highly recommend not getting the ones that dip into the basket, because that'll disturb your bed when you dump your grounds in. I use the Decent V3 tamper, and I double tamp with. I also really like to use the Bose tamper, which is right here, uh, unless I'm pulling many, many shots and I don't wanna have to tamp. I actually kind of enjoy the manual art of tamping in this, it, it makes it really easy. I talk about tampers in this video here. I do really enjoy the Swartz tool, 0.3 millimeter needles on it. It's really nice, really hefty. It has a magnet on the end, which is nice. It has this cool little stand. So I might use it just for like surface level stuff, which we'll show you when I actually pull my shot. The portafilter doesn't really matter. I really enjoy using Canal and it's because it's flat. It's similar to the Unifilter from Weber Workshops, but it's a percentage of the price. I have two canals. In order to fit one into my decent, I did have to dremel down, as you can see, so it's kind of ugly now. You gotta do what you gotta do. I'm not quite sure actually what it's made of, but what I know is it's incredibly thermally dynamic and the temperature of the port filter doesn't really matter because it'll heat up in a second and it cools down in a second. I have the Swartz basket in here. Doesn't make any optical flex in the basket, which I think is a good thing. Whenever you're tamping flat and you have bend in a basket, you're getting a lower density in the center, which can, you know, obviously promulgate channeling. Pullman's great, VST's great, IMS is great. Don't, don't, don't sweat it. Plus the holes on the bottom are 0.2 millimeters, which give a little more resistance than the typical hole size of 0.3 so that I can grind a bit coarser. 
I know that Reddit teaches you go as fine as possible before you start losing flavor, but I like to go as coarse as possible. You're gonna be on the right side of that volcano in the Hinden paper that I discussed in my TurboShot paper video. Whenever you are going finer and finer on your grind size, in theory, you should be able to extract more and more at a given ratio or what or given recipe. But in reality, you increase as you go finer and then you begin to decrease. And it's because you get more channeling, the water it just is finding little areas of less concentration in order to expose as time goes on. Most people live on the side of the volcano effect where you're on the finer end of the spectrum. So you'll get a little bit more inconsistency, which means that some parts of the puck will be at a higher extraction, some at a lower. So your net extraction is at that part on the volcano. Whereas if you're on the other side of the volcano and you have the same net extraction, all of the grounds are more close to that average extraction yield. So living on the coarser side of the volcano is definitely my preference, unless, you know, it's running in like four seconds and it tastes like soup. If I have two methods, one extracts more than the other, I can coarsen the grounds, match extraction, and I can be very confident that the one with coarser grounds is more even flow through the puck. More even flow doesn't necessarily mean a priori that it's a better tasting coffee. You can have stratified extraction and it'd be really nice, like in pour overs, I really like V60s and that's objectively a very stratified extraction. So that is everything. So let's go ahead and without further ado, we'll pull a shot. But actually, that doesn't sound like the best idea right now. The best idea sounds like doing something that actually matches my coffee routine really well. And that is obviously reading the Japanese version of Stand Art. Now, no, I can't actually read Japanese, but is it cool that my article was printed in Japanese? Yes, and I'm very humbled to see it printed in Japanese. Yes, I have written for Stand Art. It's about the history of home espresso. If you wanna add a little something something to your coffee routine, as I do here, except maybe do it in a language that you can actually read, I would recommend checking out my link down below below, which is www.standartmag.com slash Lance. So for nine US dollars, you can get one free magazine, as well as some of that good, good coffee that is shipped with each subscription. That ships worldwide. You get the magazine and coffee free as long as you pay for that shipping. They do it in only a subscription style service. You get that, 89 for a year, bada bing, bada boom, good to go. All right, thank you Standart for sponsoring the video. Let's continue on. So now I'm just gonna pull my shot. I'm gonna pull out my porta filter. I have my puck screen in here. It's it's hot, it's heated, it's good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a paper filter in here to use that water to kind of suction it to the bottom. And I just take a rag and wipe the, the sides. So today I'm doing a 19 gram dose, so there we have it. Two squirts of RDT, shake that bad boy up. Shake it, girl. Now what I like to do is grind direct to my Weber tumbler. So we're just gonna dump that in. I hate hitting it hard and having air blow those grounds everywhere. It's really annoying. You do little taps like this and it's just as effective as a full one. Place this on, then we're just gonna shake, shake it. Turn me up, turn me up. Next, I'm gonna just tap the lid because the grounds can get kind of caked on the lid and we don't want that. We're gonna place the funnel onto the porta filter and just lift this kind of goes into a little center. Then once it hits, it kind of spreads out really, really nicely. I'm just gonna take my knuckle and I'm just gonna do little vibrations kind of around the edges to settle it in place. And then I'll show you what that looks like. This may not look like the most perfect top of a puck in the world. Tamping alleviates that, or at least it seems like that with the data I've drawn, but we're gonna go ahead just for you all who might get anal that it's not perfectly level. And we'll just level off this top bit just a bit, but I'm not putting these needles more than just a couple of millimeters into the bed itself. I like to do just a little tap right here to kind of just settle it all into the basket. So when I tamp, no worries. I'm gonna go one, full compression, go up, two. Michael Cooper, Quantitative Cafe, has done some really interesting testing on multiple compressions and density of the pug. You should go check it out, but that is what led me to double tamping. Then I'll take my little mesh screen and we're just gonna drop it right on top. Place into the party zone. Ready, set, go. This again is just a nine bar shot. It's gonna be very fast, much faster than what you're used to, but it's gonna taste really nice. See, here we go. Here it comes out. Maybe it will come to the center a bit because how fast it's going. There we go. Oh yeah, look at that. Look how fast that stream is. Yummy. 
we did 19 grams in and we did that in 15 seconds. So now if I had like a VST or something, I might bring that up to 22, 23 seconds. Uh, but with this, there's some crema, there's going to be body in this. You're not sacrificing it. It's still a nine bar shot. You had really fast flow growing through, but because of the preparation we took, this is going to be a nice extraction. I guarantee you this is sitting at like, you know, 20% or so. It's also going to give us some of that body we might be looking for, but being a light roast, it's going to give me all that like, you know, punchy acidity and, and sweetness that I might be looking for. So it's really nice. You don't need these exact pieces of equipment. You don't need to replicate what I'm doing at all. This is just what I have found works for me when I'm pulling more traditional style shots. But that is it. That was a lot of words for just one kind of routine, but I wanted to show you the reasons behind what I'm doing outside of just because it tastes really good. And I think that there is a necessary kind of intersection of science and art when it comes to something as convoluted and complex as espresso extraction. I hope that you found something helpful in this and some of my approaches that maybe you can replicate at home or you can just roast me for being way too complicated down below. But in any event, Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're still sticking around, you're a real one. I would love for you to comment down below, spro, spro, spro your boat gently down the channel. Cause that makes sense. Just kidding, we WDT and that is all we see. You don't have to comment all that actually. So I don't know why I said that. But anyway, I've been sufficiently caffeinated for the day. So I'm gonna leave you at, I hope that you brew something tasty today. Check out my Patreon down below as well as my second YouTube channel, as well as like and subscribe on the video, but I digress. And cheers.